big belly. You're, you're in good shape. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so Eddie Hearns, we're out here in Chicago. You have the first event at the Wind Trust Center, October 6th. So why Chicago? We want to bring fights and events to cities that have kind of been starved of big time boxing. That are fight cities that appreciate the sport of boxing, but don't really get free. I mean, the, the great thing about coming here is already just here today, I've had a dozen people saying thank you for bringing boxing back to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And that puts a smile on your face. Because when you go to New York or you go to LA, it's just another show. Unless you're doing a, you know, a super, super show. So it's good to be here. And, and you know, what we're really trying to do is to give value for money. Stack cards from, from the top to the bottom. So not just one main fight and then a, a bit of the undercard. You know, a lot of entertainment. You've got two world championship fights on this card. You've got a big heavy Heavyweight fight. You've got Mexico against Puerto Rico in the main event. You've got all our amateurs debuting. You know, you've got Jesse McCaskill, Sean Simpson. So, you know, you know that when you pay your money, you're going to get value for money, and that's important to us. What is it about matchroom boxing? You guys seem to always find the things that your opponents are missing. Mm. Chicago, a huge boxing town. Mm. They used to sell it out 30, 40,000 yeah. tickets. Uh, the internet deal with uh, the zone. Yeah. Brilliant. What is it about match? I just think we. I, I think. I think we just. You know, the key for us is there's enough depression in life, right? Mm -hmm. So we just want to put a smile on people's faces, and we can do that by having a great time and producing great sport. Because sport is sport is eternal. You know, sport has no race or colour. Sport has no feminism, masculinity. Great sport is great sport. But if you can spin that into entertainment, into a night out, where actually people can come to this show, dress up, listen to some music, watch great boxing, have a drink, and leave and go, do you know what, that was a great night. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, what we're doing. And, and when you can provide that kind of in-event experience, it comes across on TV as well. And like when you watch our UK shows, and there's 90,000 people in the audience singing and dancing, like people, wow! This is incredible. Mm -hmm. But you don't really get that in America. But people say, oh, what does Eddie Hearn know about the American market? We're just people. Like, that don't matter that you're American and I'm from England. We still love to have a great time. We love boxing. No, we love music. We love entertainment. We love a good night out. So that's what you've got to produce. But we've got a long way to go. But part of the factor is to produce excitement from the start of the night. You know, great fights, and then when we move into the championship fights, bang, wow, great fight, whoa, another one, whoa. So that when you leave, you go, that was incredible. When are you coming back to Chicago? That's what, that's the main thing I want people to say after the show. When are you coming back to Chicago? That's when you know you've been successful. So we hope, you know, you talk about these great crowds of years gone by, and we'll see, you know, we'll see. We have a really good diverse card of Americans, you know, local fighters, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Polish, Russian. So we're back, we've captured everybody in Chicago. Now we have to promote properly to make sure they turn up and have a good time. All you need is one Irish man. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Has your experience with the dart games crossed over into boxing and helped? Uh, it's the same. It's the same concept, which is fun. Mm. A great night out with great sport. That that's the same concept, and it's so basic. Like, you know, people say, "Oh, what is it you do?" You know. We just, we have a good time. You know, we, we know how to play the right music at the right times. Mm -hmm. We know how to put on the events. It's about the build up as well. So what you do is, when you leave this press conference, you don't just go away for eight weeks and show up on fight week. So a lot of promoters leave today and go, job done, mm -hmm. see you on fight week. No, no, you have to work every day to push this show. You have to have people on the ground in Chicago. You have to get people into the Polish communities, the Puerto Rican communities, the Belize communities, according to Gerald Miller as well. So, but ultimately, you've got to, you've got to work. You've got to sell it. You know, you're not, people aren't just going to... You know, unless it's like, I don't know, Joshua Wilder or Canelo Golovkin, you still have to be sold something, mm -hmm. you know? So why should I come to the event in Chicago? Quite simple. You have some great Chicago local talent on. We have three of our top US amateurs debuting. You have a world championship fight between Danny Roman and Gabby McDonald. You have another world championship light heavyweight fight between Baturbiev and Callum Johnson. You have a big heavyweight fight between Gerald Miller and a Polish legend in Andrewick. 
and you have Mexico, Puerto Rico. So you're getting unbelievable value for your money. And that's important today because you've got to leave a customer happy. That is the most important thing to us. That leads into my next question. Why do you think Deontay Wilder isn't as big a star in America as Joshua is in the UK? It's a smaller place, obviously. Okay. Um, I just think that... We've promoted Joshua from his debut. Mm -hmm. You know, Wilder started out. Even when he, you know, I knew, I started first started hearing about Wilder when he was like 30 and 0, right? I mean, like, you can't start promoting at 30 and 0. Mm -hmm. So, I think they started too late, and by the time he, when he became world champion against Stavern, he was irrelevant, right? Mm -hmm. So then you're always playing catch up. I think now he's got, a, you know, he's got a decent profile. I think he's done a good job. He's, you know, I feel sorry for him because he has to do it all himself. See, I'm a mouthpiece, right? right? I just talk, but I talk on your behalf. So when you're training in the gym, I'm out there. And when I say I'm talking, it's just not just me turning up saying blah blah blah. It's my company, my machine, pushing across digital space, pushing across social media, me physically talking, going around, selling the gospel of this fighter. You know, you can't do it. it it'll tire you out. But Wilder has to do that himself. So it's almost like you know, as 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 many faults as Don King had, mm -hmm. he was a great promoter. All right. When you had a fight in town and Don King had the fight, you'd know about it. Absolutely. You know? So and that's what a promoter's job is. I'm not here to be liked. You know, I'm not here for a popularity contest. I'm here to sell you fighters, matchups and shows. So that's what I do. And I don't think there's enough of that in America. The fighters want you to be out there for you, banging the drum. You know, I can see it sometimes I talk about a fighter and they like Jesse Vargas, you know, yeah. this guy, oh yeah, that's me, that's me, you know? Everyone loves that. So that's our job. And you know, I think when you talk about Wilder, why is he not as big as, and that's the reason. He wasn't built from the debut. Joshua was built from the debut. On Joshua's debut, I headlined him on his debut at the O2. Sold about 7,000 tickets, right? Mm. And from there, I boxed him all over the country in England, right? And you know, people talk about, oh, Joshua should travel. He's the world heavyweight champion. He's not the British. Deontay Wilder doesn't travel. You know, he boxes in New York or Alabama. Mm -hmm. He should be boxing all around America, but it's too late now. But still, he's still, you know, he's, he's off the back of the Anthony Joshua negotiations. His profile's gone through the roof, you know? So, you know, he's, he's doing well. Do you think the fight between Wilder and Fury will take place, or is it just talk? Well, I can only base it on the conversations that I've had with Fury. Like as in a couple of months ago when he was going to sign with us, mm -hmm. but the the level of opposition that he wanted to give us for the next four fights was like laughable. So how he then goes and fights Wilder, having not even boxed anyone, I can't see it. But who knows? I, I like the fight. I mean, it's a terrible fight for Fury at the moment because he doesn't have the confidence. He doesn't, you know. Um, but it makes the Joshua fight massive for Wilder. So I can see. I think Wilder's in a weak spot at the moment. You know, I think he he really needs. You know, I feel I feel as though he's under. He feels under pressure. Like maybe not under pressure, but he wanted the Joshua fight. Now he's saying to the team, right, what are you going to deliver me? Mm -hmm. Showtime haven't really got the money to give him the money that he'd like. So they might have to do a pay per view fight that might not be pay per view. If that makes sense, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like Garcia against um, Spence. Now Garcia, uh, Showtime can't afford that fight, so they have to do it on pay per view. It's not a pay per view yet. It doesn't do the numbers. So. I think it's interesting times in, in the landscape of boxing.